And this one really had us scratching our heads here in the newsroom. A 200-foot AM radio tower in Walker County is gone, stolen without a trace. A group of thieves in Alabama managed to steal an entire 200-foot AM radio tower. I've, I've been in the radio business around it all my life and, and then been in it for 26 years professionally. And I can say I've never heard of anything like this. And this one, I've seen it all now. Yeah, you're good. It's going. Action. It's Friday, February the 2nd. A bush hogging crew is going out to an AM station's tower to clear the grounds from all the overgrown uh, vegetation that's there. Uh, they roll up to the AM tower station and they notice something pretty peculiar. The tower's gone. The bushhogging crew call the owner of WJLX, Brett Elmore, and say, hey man, the tower's gone. Uh, Brett's like, what do you mean the tower's gone? Are you sure you're at the right spot? The guy says, yeah, I'm sure I'm at the right spot. And so Brett goes out there to check it out himself. He gets out there and finds out the tower's gone. They were right. They're at the right spot. Somebody had stolen the tower. Not only had they stolen the tower, but they had stolen all of the equipment that was inside of the building next to the tower. Um, just cleaned them out overnight, seemingly. Brett called the police, filed a report with them, and um, started talking to journalists. Brett started a GoFundMe to raise $60,000 so that they can rebuild their AM tower. Um, and he also contacted the media and they wrote a story and their story is basically just, damn, that's crazy. Somebody stole a 200 foot radio tower. Cause that is crazy. I heard that story from somebody at work. Somebody mentioned it. It's uh, this happened in Jasper, Alabama. And we all know Jasper, Alabama to be home of uh, a lot of uh, meth heads. And so we all just kind of joked and said, damn, these are some fucking highly motivated meth heads. Uh, how, how did they steal a 200 foot tower? That is an accomplishment. You know, we talked about it for a minute or two and then I didn't think about it anymore. Um, then two days ago on Friday the 9th, I was watching YouTube and a video popped up in my subscription box from Gearling Engineering about the tower theft. And in that video, uh, him and his dad, Jeff Gearling and his dad talk about the theft. Um, his dad has been in the radio business for a very long time, and uh, this is something that has never happened before, a radio tower being stolen. Um, people have had their equipment stolen and stuff like that, but never the actual tower. This would be like a first in history. They were talking about how crazy the theft was of a tower, and then we're also talking about how in radio forums, um, a bunch of radio heads were talking about how crazy it was. Um, but not really how crazy the theft was, but how crazy the story was and how they didn't really understand how a tower could be stolen in one night, presumably by some junkies. Stealing a radio tower is a logistical nightmare. <laughs> it's super big. It's heavy. It's held up by these things called guy wires. Um, so you got to cut these guy wires, knock the tower over, chop it up, haul it away. Um, before you do any of that, you got to disconnect it from the amplifiers that are whatever they're called, um, that are putting high voltage into the tower because AM towers are the antenna. Um, and so they were talking about how crazy this was. The forums were talking about how it doesn't really seem plausible. Uh, the forums were talking about how it's crazy that nobody from the station noticed, um, you know, that it had happened and that it took landscapers to find it or bush hogging crew to find it. Um, and that night it got the gears turning for me. Um, I mentioned it to my friend Gavin. Um, uh, we talked about it and because we live in Birmingham, uh, we're only like 45 minutes from Jasper. We decided we should go on site and see what happened. Um, if it was stolen, we should find like a fence smashed in because regulation requires that there's a fence around the antenna we should find like gash marks in the ground or like the dirt is like turned up from the tower falling and maybe we'll find out how they took the tower down did they use a saw did they use a torch 
um, you know, we were just curious, looking for evidence. So uh, Friday night, we decided that the next morning, uh, Saturday, we were going to go out and go to the site and take videos. Um, and I, my plan with the videos was just to post them to the forums and let people, you know, see what the site looked like. hoping to find um, dirt coming up or washing the ground, evidence that the tower had been knocked over. I want to talk about how far away the next tower was and stuff like that. There's also some other units that we can get rough ideas. So right here, I want to visualize what 200 feet would look like because I've never measured 200 feet, so I have a good idea in my head how far that is. It's not the most accurate thing ever, but to illustrate the point, 
We went over to the station to see if anyone was there that we could talk to, even though we weren't hopeful anyone would be there, since the FCC denied their request to continue broadcasting on FM, since they're only licensed for AM. But I'm getting ahead of myself. We're entering the speculation zone. I'm going to speculate on motives and give my reasons for thinking this, but it's just my opinion. I of course think I'm onto something, but at the same time, I could be wrong. Again, after this video is over, please check the pinned comment for any corrections. I think that the tower has been down for some time. I think the tower either fell down or was taken down to reduce liability. I don't think that happened a week ago. Let me give you my thought process. Let's start with some backstory so that we can get the whole picture. WJLX is an AM station that also does FM translation. FM translation is a rebroadcast of AM stations so that they can be picked up by FM radios. WJLX is not licensed to do FM only broadcast. The only reason that they are able to do FM broadcast is because of FM translation. In order to do FM translation, they're required to be broadcasting on AM. If the AM broadcast stops, the FM broadcast is also supposed to stop. WJLX primarily brands itself as an FM station. If you look at their Facebook or their website or you go to the station in person, it all says WJLX 101.5 FM. This branding leads me to think that FM and their internet broadcast are their primary money makers. I think that the only reason they're still doing AM is because they're required to in order to broadcast on FM. Because of this, I think that the AM tower maintenance was not prioritized. Brett said in his GoFundMe that the AM tower was uninsured, and that's the reason they needed to do the GoFundMe. I think that's insane. I think that it is a super unwise business decision to uninsure your most valuable asset, which is the AM tower. It's the only thing that allows them to be broadcasting in the first place. Because without the AM tower broadcasting, they are not supposed to be broadcasting on FM. I think it might not have been financially viable for them to have insurance on the tower or keep up with maintenance on the tower. Because in February of 2021, they were fined $1,500 by the FCC for failing to timely file a license renewal application for the station. They didn't pay this fine as evident by the document stating that on March 11, 2021, the licensee submitted a written response in which it did not dispute that it had violated the rules, but requested that the fine was canceled due to their inability to pay, noting that the station had constantly operated at a loss. Why am I making this video? I feel like the truth was not presented from the beginning. The problem with that for me is that the current optics of the story are, oh, look at this poor radio station that had their AM tower stolen please go donate. They've been a victim of a crime. They're a victim. They need help. I feel like Brett went to the media with the lie of the tower was stolen in an effort to get the sympathy donations. I think that if he had come out and asked for donations back when the tower needed maintenance, there's a chance that people would rally behind him and give him those donations. Unless those people are only donating now because they believe that WJLX is a victim. If this was any other business that was failing because something substantial had changed, radio stations would have been out of business a long time ago. Think about Blockbuster. They were doing great along with all the other movie rental businesses at the time, but then came along Netflix. Netflix was doing physical media when they first started, except for they were mailing it to the customers rather than having an in-store experience. Then Netflix transitioned to doing digital streaming. Blockbuster saw the changes that Netflix was making to streaming rather than physical media and decided not to transition because that they thought that they still had a viable business. Because of that, Blockbuster failed. They tried to transition to streaming, but it was way too late and Netflix had gained way too much market share. Nobody feels bad for Blockbuster. They did it to themselves. They saw the new things that were on the horizon and never changed anything. I feel like radio is in a similar situation right now. They've had the same business model since the dawn of radio, which is to sell ads, they have transitioned to streaming, but aren't able to keep up with on-demand media services and targeted ad platforms. The only reason that they're still around is because of CPB funding. CPB is the steward of the federal government's investment in public broadcasting and the largest single source of funding for public radio, television, and related online and mobile services. If this funding was cut, thousands of public radio, including WJLX, would cease to exist. I feel like because WJLX receives this public funding, they have a responsibility to do things the right way so that they can stay operational and also be truthful to the public.
I hope that WJLX finds a way to keep going. I'm going to include a link to their GoFundMe in the description. Don't go donate because you feel like they're a victim of theft. I think it's pretty clear that they are not. Go and donate because you care about access to public radio. A lot of people in Walker County still listen to public radio, and it's super important that they have access to it. Last thing, if you made it this far, thanks. This is obviously not my normal thing. I don't plan on doing this like ever um, again. I don't know. Um, if you want to leave a like on this video, I'd appreciate that, but I honestly don't care. Um, feel free to subscribe, but again, I'll probably never post anything ever again unless there was a major reason to update this story um, or there was something major that I got wrong in the story and needed to update it. Um, other than that, uh, thanks for your time and have a good one.